I am um, Jean-Nicolas Vauté. I'm uh, the chief of the section of uh, hepatobiliary and pancreas surgery at MD Anderson Cancer Center. And um, I'm heading um, a section of uh, nine surgeons with expertise in, uh, in hepatobiliary uh, and pancreas cancer. Uh, we uh, have an interest in uh, obviously in cancer since this is MD Anderson Cancer Center and most of our patients present with, uh, with uh, complicated uh, cancers of the uh, liver, of the biliary tract and of the pancreas. So metastatic uh, disease to the liver is when you have implants from a primary cancer in your liver. So that means the liver um, is usually normal and there are cancer cells from another organ and this is called secondary liver cancer as opposed to primary liver cancer which develops uh, from usually abnormal um, liver cells and, and which is a completely different uh, uh, disease and problem. Uh, usually patients who have primary liver cancer have uh, associated liver diseases and damage to the liver. Yes, it means you have cancer in the liver, uh, although the liver is, uh, is normal, the uh, underlying liver is not involved with cancer. So the options for liver metastasis are surgery and chemotherapy as the main options. And uh, usually, in fact, these two options are combined and uh, uh, the surgery is usually performed after a short course of chemotherapy and the surgery to remove the implants in the liver is followed by chemotherapy. The treatment is based on the extent of the disease and surgery uh, is recommended in patients who don't have miliary disease. That means a liver that is completely seeded with cancer. We usually don't count the number of metastases. An important point also is that when we decide to do this uh, liver surgery, we make sure the patient doesn't have spread of his or her cancer to other organs. So as I said, yes, chemotherapy is usually given in sandwich before and afterwards, but we insist on patients having short course of chemotherapy and it's a, it's a standard chemotherapy that's approved for advanced metastatic colorectal cancer and all patients with metastatic colorectal cancer are candidates for this chemotherapy. About 25% of patients with metastatic colorectal cancer are candidates for liver surgery, for removal of the metastasis in the liver. The liver is the organ where colorectal cancer spreads the most and these metastases can be removed. So the multidisciplinary team is, is very useful and, uh, and it's, a, um, it's a team that uh, includes a medical oncologist, surgeon, radiologist, interventional radiologists, uh, radiation uh, specialists, and in these uh, multidisciplinary conferences, uh, we discuss uh, the patient uh, sequence of treatment. So we have um, a conference uh, once a week at our center, and, uh, and it's usually full. We present eight patients and uh, the patients are reviewed in detail. We start with, the, uh, with a review of the history of the patient, followed by a review of the imaging. Then we discuss the pathology with the pathologist uh, being there at the conference. And then as a group, we make a disposition for the patient. So <clears throat> the recovery uh, after liver surgery, uh, that's uncomplicated and that's uh, for the vast majority of patients, an uncomplicated surgery, uh, uh, will uh, keep you in the hospital from uh, uh, an overnight to uh, one week. That's the range you could expect, depends on the extent of the surgery, depends also uh, whether or not uh, with this surgery you, uh, 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 on the liver you have included a resection 
of the primary cancer in the colon because that's uh, uh, sometimes something we perform. We perform combined surgery. Sometimes also in, in some patients, we combine the liver surgery with the removal or resection of uh, a limited number of implants in the lung or in other organs. Again, the surgery is decided based on the extent of the disease. Disease outside of the liver, besides the primary, usually excludes the patient for surgery, but not always. This is why you have to consult a, a group of experts to determine whether, in your case, surgery on the liver will be indicated. This is a surgery that uh, <coughs> gets you back to normal. Um, <coughs> and um, uh, the, the, the side effects of the surgery are essentially um, the side effect associated with the incision, if it's an open liver surgery, and even if it's a laparoscopic surgery, and, uh, <coughs> and uh, pain control is a, is a very important aspect of this surgery, and, uh, and, uh, and throughout the care, uh, the patients are, are treated um, um, with <coughs> com um <coughs> Throughout their recovery and their care, patients are treated with medication to control pain and, and ensure a good recovery. So you expect a full recovery. So we have patients who have had major liver resection. That means resection of uh, more than 50% of the liver and up to 80%. And um, they are out there 10 years after surgery. Uh, I have a, a patient who is running a marathon, another one is flying his airplane. Uh, we have all sorts of patients, some uh, cutting the, the wood on the farm. So uh, they all recover. You recover usually after two to three months, you are back essentially to close to normal and it takes a year uh, for the aches and pains to go away after your surgery. The liver is, is very unique uh, because the liver regenerates. So that's the only organ in, 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 in the body that really regenerates. Uh, uh, we wish the brain would regenerate. And um, uh, the liver can um, um, regenerate even after major, major liver resection, up to 80%. Uh, and then what's important also is that the liver can be primed. The regeneration can be primed prime before surgery, there are procedures that can be done uh, in uh, radiology such as uh, portal vein embolization that induce the regeneration of the liver that will remain after surgery and it takes only two to three weeks for the liver to regenerate. So uh, um, at the multidisciplinary uh, conference uh, uh, with the colleagues in interventional radiology, we uh, uh, decide in patients who will have a major liver resection to do this portal vein embolization, which is a blockage of the portal vein that uh, feeds the liver on the side uh, where the tumor is. And this side of the liver, uh, after the blockage of the portal vein, will shrink and the other side will increase in, in, in size and, and then the patient will be ready for surgery. And, and the trauma of surgery and, and, uh, and it will be much less because the liver has already regenerated. The liver is a <clears throat> power station of the body. So uh, <clears throat> the heart is the pump, the brain is the computer. So the power station of the body um, uh, allows the patient to feel strong and, and, and gives him this energy and, and clearly we feel when patients have major liver resection and have a small liver, they are tired after the surgery, they function at a lower power. So having uh, um, uh, tools to prime the liver regeneration before surgery is very helpful, plus it can prevent also hepatic insufficiency and, 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 um, and complications of surgery.